Hi everyone, um, my name is Vansa and I'm the CEO of Omisego. And I'm Kasima, I'm the CTO of Omisego. Uh, so welcome to our AMA number 29. First AMA of 2020. Wow, very exciting year ahead. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to kick off the year with this AMA and many more to come. Let's do it. Is the finalization of this audit alone to start allowing partners and Musa to use the OMG network for real transactions? Or are there other features and developments needed for the network as well for that? If not, can you provide more details on what's required from here on out before letting real volume trade? So completion of the audits was a really big milestone for us. And like I mentioned in the tech update, um, it was a lot of work to get there and we are proud of what we've done up to that point. Um, but like I also mentioned in the tech update, it is just one component of a much larger system and this is true of many layer twos. So the contracts are a pretty critical component, but we still have these two other services that are all work together to operate the OMG network or run the Plasma protocol. Um, the two big pieces that we're running are the child chain and watcher. And so our focus now moves over to those two and making sure we have all the production readiness put in place to operate those two services. Um, so there is still a big pile of work for us to do to get us ready to run a production service, including security, um, making sure our deployments are good, uh, making sure we have the proper alerting and monitoring, and also making sure that we have processes in place to take care of these services. Um, so I think the best answer for you is we are going to take a responsible path to releasing these public services. And just like the audit recommendation, we're going to be taking step by step to slowly bring in load to the system. And maybe just to kind of conclude that question as well, because um, we always get the question, right? Um, we'll make the services available to the public as soon as we feel and our auditors feel like it's responsible to do so. In the audit, you found some medium-level security issues. Um, could you explain to us in a non-high-level tech language what these issues were? Yeah, so, so Kasima and I were talking about this earlier, and there are kind of big four points that stuck out to me, right? So input validation was one, um, removal of unused code was the other one, and then denial of service attack was one. And I think the fourth one was around UTS tech, uh, UTXO fragmentation. Yeah, but I think those are the four major themes as I see them out of the audit. And I have, I have the, the major medium findings right here, and uh, let's go through the four uh, at a high level. So the first one around input validation, basically checking that there is valid input coming into the functions. Um, there were, we didn't put enough checks in, and so um, the operation of those functions were correct, but it opened the door for someone to craft certain kinds of input to do um, invalid things. Uh, the second one was removing unused code, and I, I should amend that by saying it's removing currently unused code. Mm -hmm. And basically, we had designed for a set of features around exchange settlement. Um, but the auditors correctly saw that as an unnecessary complexity, especially for this first version of the framework. Um, so we took that out uh, to reduce the possibility of security issues. Um, not that point though, that doesn't mean that we can't bring it back in, in the future. Right, so so we still have the option to uh, put that functionality back in, it's just there's more operational load on us to do that. Um, the denial of service attack was a really nice finding, uh, basically around the gas stipend on calling this function called process exits. We handled that better. And then the UTXO fragmentation piece is something that has been true of many plasmas and, and something that we've known about. Um, basically, that's saying that if your UTXO is smaller than the amount of money it takes to exit that, that UTXO, um, it's probably not worth it for you to exit. And the way we address that is allowing people to merge their UTXOs for free. So, so that in kind of business speaking, it's if you have 25 cents, um, can I merge that with multiple 25 cents to make it a dollar? Yeah, that... exactly, exactly. You can, you can take your coins and, and exchange them for one piece of bill and then you can exit that. Got it. Um, so maybe the other thing to touch on is one of the big lessons learned for us um, with the audit process was we essentially gave the auditor a big chunk of code. Big complex purpose. I'd say audit this. Sorry, auditors. <laughs> so that, that took them a while, right? And yeah. so, so what we've been talking about in terms of improving the process is we're going to do it more frequently and more iteratively. We're going to involve the auditors in the process more deeply um, so that they get engaged early on in us developing new software and so that it just reduces some of the load on them and also the load on us as well. What is OmniSego doing to encourage entities to use the OMG network 
as opposed to forking it and creating a new coin similar to what Binance did with Cosmos and the Adam coin. Okay, so based on my understanding, Binance didn't exactly for Cosmos and Atom, um, what they did was they took Tendermint and then they build a bunch of tooling and functionalities on top and they also build um, some proprietary exchange features that actually allows you to just trade on Binance Chain. Um, and I think the reason or or not, you know, not forking um, the main chain is actually a very smart move because it would be very costly to essentially maintain, right? Because you lose that community. Um, and coming from open source community to begin with, because you know, I think that you understand this better than, than most people, how important the community is in terms of maintaining and developing your source code. Yeah, if you fork it, I think you lose some of the um, upstream contributions either from us and from a burgeoning community around it. Um, we were here to build a public service, a public good, and so so I think that this is available for people. But in addition to that, I think um, like a lot of open source businesses, um, uh, the source code is available for people to use as, the, as they choose, but it is a lot of operational cost to run it. Um, and so, and, and also sort of like infrastructure and, and people costs, a lot of resources to run the whole thing. And so I think it, we hope that, that we built a service that is valuable enough for people to use rather than running off and forking on their own. Yeah, and, and even just from a business and operational perspective, right? Uh, we've been building the network and we have essentially all the historical knowledge in terms of what research were done, what um, development decisions were made, and I think those are really valuable in terms of how you better operate the network and make future decisions. Um, as you said, it's an open public network, and so this was meant to be a public good, but at the same time, we do think in the early days um, we need to kind of help usher this along. And it's not, not so much of just the operational challenges, um, there's also business challenges to it, right? It's not like grabbing coffee, you code, and then you come up with a full functioning financial ecosystem. Um, there's a lot of partnership and business development that needs to happen. Um, we also need to look into the different pieces that come and support the financial ecosystem together. Um, so, so I think it's just like to paraphrase what you've always said, um, code doesn't equal product and product doesn't necessarily equal business at the end of the day. So thank you everyone for joining our AMA. Again, I'm Bansa. I'm Kasima. And if you would like to find out more information, you can follow our blogs or... Don't forget to subscribe.